Today we're going to do a quick video on playing melodically. So playing melodically is actually pretty straightforward. There's one secret that I think really locks everything in with playing melodically and making your lines really outline harmony smoothly. And we're going to talk about that in a quick second. But first, just a quick plug. So I'm really excited to be hosting with Jazz Lesson Videos a virtual jazz workshop this summer. It's going to be really awesome. So we're going to have, I think it's like 26 classes or actually more, I think, spread out over six days. And there's going to be a, a bunch of amazing guest artists teaching these classes. Everyone from uh, Grammy-nominated pianist Manuel Valera to Adam Neely and Jay Metcalf, Better Sax, as a lot of you might know him as, and uh, Stephen Feifke, Noah Kelman, Brian Carter, so many amazing uh, guest artists are going to be part of the faculty. And so what I've honestly done here is I tried to create... Uh, the dream workshop, you know, that I would have dreamed of uh, going to as a student. And it's still the, the dream workshop for me uh, today as an adult. And we've already got uh, a wide uh, range of, of ages signed up for this uh, uh, workshop. And what we're going to do is each class is going to cover a range of topics. So we're going to make sure that each class is really appropriate for anyone who's you know first starting as an improviser and also anyone who's super serious and wants to get into more advanced topics within each master class. So really excited to make this happen and make sure to check it out at jazzlessonvideos.com and we'll have the exact link link I think it's you know slash virtual dash jazz dash workshop. We'll have the exact link uh, for you uh, you know in the, in this video description so you can just just check it out there. All right, so now getting into the lesson today, and this is something that I've been working on uh, with my new text lesson students. Uh, as you might know, the uh, studio is currently closed because we're at capacity, but feel free to sign up for the wait list. Uh, but anyway, I've been working on voice leading a lot with uh, you know the students in this text lesson studio, and because I really believe it is kind of the secret to playing melodically. And so I've said this in videos before, and in all the master classes I do, I do mention this. I really feel strongly that I can recognize, if I were to look at a transcription of a soloist, I would be able to recognize whether it is a world-class player or a jazz legend versus a more developing impro improviser just by looking at beat four into beat one of the next measure and knowing what the chord changes are, of course, from the song. And the reason for that is that beat four to one is where you really see how someone is voice leading. Voice leading originally was a classical term. All it meant was that in choral music, it was just how one voice would move, uh, you know, to outline the, the chord changes from one chord to another. And, you know, that you could find a fancy Oxford definition on it, but really all it means is just the smooth transition from chord to chord and outlining that with a single line, a single note line. And so, you know, what we do as improvisers is we really want to play melodically from beat four to beat one. And I'm even going to show you today, it almost doesn't matter what you play in between. You could play random notes throughout the whole measure and literally just play some melodic content from beat four to one, and it's going to sound really nice. Um, so we'll check that out in a quick second. But first, what we're going to do is we're just going to go over how you can think about this on a blues. And I made, this is going to be a different PDF from uh, all the PDFs that I've released in the past. I've made a PDF ebook that I'm calling a, a workbook, essentially. We're calling it a voice leading workbook. Uh, because what it is, is it actually gives you the opportunity to improvise and fill in in the gaps. And I found this when I used to teach Skype lessons and now with this text lesson studio, I find this to be a really, really effective method to improve your melodic playing. Because what you're going to do is you're going to have the opportunity to fill in the blanks however you want, essentially. Although I would really recommend starting with just the chord scale notes from bar to bar, because that's going to be what sounds most melodic and is a really important thing to practice. But you're going to fill in the gaps with whatever you want, and then you're just going to make sure you play from beat four to beat one what's written. 
And so one thing that actually does is it actually locks in your harmonic rhythm. What I mean by harmonic rhythm is just keeping track of what's going on, you know, beat by beat, measure by measure, and being able to keep track of where you are in the bar. A lot of developing players ask, you know, oh, I get lost so much when I'm trying to, uh, you know, work through a standard. Well, one of the reasons for that is your harmonic rhythm is off. So if you use this as a guide to kind of pull you in and make sure that you just keep track of, oh, it's beat four, got to be playing this, that's going to do a lot for you. Now, of course, there are going to be some techniques that will make this sound better if you're keeping in mind these techniques throughout the rest of the bar. So let's talk about those things to keep in mind now. But just really briefly before we talk about the different techniques that you can use to fill in those notes in between, let's just uh, talk really quickly about how you can do this voice leading on your own. And again, if you want to just get the workbook that I've made, you'll have all of this given to you on 20 different standards so you can really make sure you're internalizing really solid uh, voice leading from measure to measure. However, you can totally do this on your own. And if you want to, here's what I would think about. A few fail-safe methods that we're going to use throughout this workbook are going to be to one, step up into the note, two, step down into the note, or three, step around the note. And the note that you want to land on to be safe can always just be a chord tone. Now, this isn't the only way to do solid voice leading. Now, of course, you could do things like delay the resolution of the, the chord tone and, and all sorts of fancy stuff like that. But really, that's going to start to happen naturally after you really get a solid demand of just landing on chord tones. So again, I think the best way to do this is to have the voice leading kind of planned out for you like this. So you know that the voice leading is going to be really solid. And then you're just focusing on filling in the notes in between. So let's check out the different techniques to fill in the notes in between. So really, there are three things that I would recommend keeping in mind for all the in-between area when you're filling in the notes in these exercises. So the first thing I mentioned is if you focus on first when you're doing these fill-in exercises, you probably want to focus on playing diatonically from bar to bar first. And if you do that, you'll find that that in itself ends up really sounding great. And there will still be some chromatic motion created just by the chromatic motion that happens from chord to chord. For instance, you'll see in bar two in this blues, you'll see bar two to bar three, there's chromatic motion playing that concert B flat to A flat to A in a B flat blues. You're gonna see that chromatic motion from bar two to bar three. And th those are actually all just diatonic notes. They're all notes within each chord scale, but there's chromatic motion happening in that area of the chord scales as they switch from bar to bar. And that is an example of voice leading right there, that smooth transition from chord to chord. So the second thing that I would keep in mind is ideally you want to kind of, when you get to that fourth beat, you want to kind of be in that kind of area as far as the melodic contour goes. So in other words, you want to be close by intervallically speaking. Um, if you're looking at this first bar in this blues exercise and you're getting close to beat four where you want to hit that F, um, you don't necessarily want to be like all the way down at an E like an octave below. That's not necessarily going to sound great. Now, however, anything can sound, sound awesome if you're playing with, you know, really, really convincing rhythmic feel. And if you actually know the notes you're playing, because you're not going to sound like you're just stabbing at notes if, if you're hearing it. That's a whole other thing. And again, that's what I referenced earlier. And we're going to do that in a bit here. But ideally, you want to be kind of playing in that range that you're getting to. All right, and the third thing to keep in mind is literally just that note before you play beat four, that note, that, the notes that you're given. That note before, if you play a chord tone, that is a fail safe. It will always sound good. And the reason for that is chord tones are just always outlined in the harmony. So if you're outlined in the harmony and the harmony is good, which they always are in jazz standards, really, it's going to sound really nice and melodic. All right, so in this PDF, there are 20 standard song forms where you're given these kind of fill-in worksheets. Uh, but we're just going to go over the blues, and I'm going to play things. I'm going to be pulling in and out of time. But there are backing tracks included in this package if you want to practice with those. But a lot of times you want to just kind of do this out of time and just sort of work bar by bar and figure out how you want to fill in the notes. And since I'm going through a blues here, hopefully all of you will feel pretty comfortable with what that sounds like harmonically. So you're not going to be in the dark, so to speak, about what's going on in the harmonic context, just hearing me play these solo lines. All right, so without any further ado, I'm just going to play through this exercise and I'm going to just sort of 
talk about it as I do it. So here's from the start. This is this blues. I'm going to play through. I'm going to fill in the notes in between. And for the most part, I'm just going to kind of play a continuous line because that's a really great way to practice your melodic line development. You're welcome to start and stop. You're welcome to use a variety of rhythms. You're welcome to rest a lot. And obviously, that's a really great way to pace a solo. But for the sake of developing your line construction, I would personally recommend trying to fill in the gaps as much as possible with probably mainly eighth notes, although triplets are great too. <laughs> All right, so what I did there so far was I played all diatonic notes. And again, the melodic contour stayed really close by. So I could have jumped around a lot, and that sounds fine. But again, I would really recommend to start. You want to practice this stuff, keeping those three things in mind that I mentioned earlier. Now, for sake of showing you, though, you really could play whatever you want in between all this stuff, and it's going to sound pretty cool. Check this out. So as you could tell, that was actually a pretty cool way of playing some inside out, you know, creating some tension and resolution, and playing some inside out lines. So that can be pretty hip, but again, the first step to being able to play out, as I always like to say, is being able to play in because then you know what you're going to be pushing against. If you have control over playing inside, then you can truly and accurately pick the outside notes and pick the outside notes consistently so you can create some really cool tension. All right, so now I'm just going to play through this a little bit more from the top, mainly keeping those three things in mind that I mentioned earlier. <laughs> So there I played through that whole first chorus. But you're not necessarily going to be able to do that right off the bat. So what I would really recommend is playing bar to bar and figuring out all the possibilities within each bar and just messing around with that and then transitioning really from one bar to the next and practicing two bars at a time. So let's check out what that would be like. Let's just look at that first to the second bar. So what I played for all the demonstrations was I played this. Now, another thing that you could try, for instance, would be... So there's a variation. Here's another. So with all of these, I'm just playing various diatonic notes. Here's another. So as you can see, if you're just playing diatonically, that's pretty fail safe. All these lines end up sounding good. And all I'm doing is just filling in diatonic notes in between and then making sure once I get to beat four to play the, the concert E flat, C and D. Now again, let's play some non-diatonic notes or add some chromaticism. <laughs> So all that stuff sounds pretty good too. So really what you want to do is just practice bar to bar and just do trial and error. If you don't like it, don't play it again. If you do like it, make a note of it. Maybe sing it, really internalize it and just start to internalize from bar to bar what starts to feel good. You don't need to think about this stuff when you're on the gig. You don't need to think about what you're playing when you're performing, when you're recording. That's all good. When I'm improvising, ultimately, I'm not thinking about anything. However, when I'm practicing, that is your opportunity to be really deliberate with your process, and so you can improve at skills like voice leading. All right, guys, so I hope that was helpful. Obviously, you can create these worksheets on your own. However, if you'd like to go download uh, the worksheet that I've created at jazzlessonvideos.com, I went through 20 standards. And again, I really try to do the most solid voice leading possible from bar to bar. And so you guys can just fill in the notes in between. I hope it will be a really useful resource for you guys. 
and make sure to check out the virtual jazz workshop as well. It's going to be a really amazing week. I'm looking forward to presenting so many amazing guest artists working on so many different and so many cool topics. So it's going to be awesome. Make sure to check out the schedule over at jazzlessonvideos.com. Link in the description. And I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching as always.